I know all the swimming pools are shut, but taking a dip in the fish tank seems a bit extreme. Oh, you got to exercise somehow, mate. Oh, anyway. What's in this workshop update then? Um, Since you're here. Uh, what have we got? We've got a defender that uh, we've done a carburetor clean up on because it had, was full of mud due to it not having a snorkel fitted to it. So Steve's uh, fabricated up a nice snorkel system to it. Um, we've got a P5 that we've extracted the engine from and Holly's built the, a new engine up for, so we're going to visit the engine building bay as well. Um, we went out for a road test in a car, didn't we? We did, a P38. Green one, Gems, um, which we built a 4.6 engine for, so we went out to, to show you that. And um, we've got a little yellow Westfield to introduce to you all, so um, yeah. You might need that. Yeah, well this is the second time we've done it, because the first time you didn't plug the microphone in. Yeah, we nobody knows. Right, well this uh, rather lovely P5 has been sent down to us. Um, the customer has already applied our carburetor kit and ignition upgrades. The 3.5 engine has been uh, rebuilt elsewhere. Unfortunately, the customer is not particularly happy with the, the rebuild he's had done somewhere else. It's burning a lot of oil um, and generally uh, just not running particularly well despite our efforts to just give it a bit of a setup, etc., and diagnose in discussions with the customer, he has decided to have us build him an engine. Um, the power plant that we're building up for isn't gonna be a, a stock 3.5. We've actually decided to um, increase capacity slightly. We're going for a four litre, so a nice strong cross bolted bottom end, standard cylinder heads, and a Piper Torque Max camshaft. So just a really nice, uh, sort of what we would build as a standard four litre with our Torque Max cam, still obviously applying the ignition upgrades and carburetor you can see here. Um, obviously we are going to look at a few other things on the vehicle that the customers requested, i.e. Uh, some questionable pipe work and probably more questionable wiring. Nice. So uh, we'll hand this over to Steve in the workshop and uh, hopefully by the end of this workshop update he'll have uh, got the engine out. Alright, let's get rid of that bit and... Let's go to the engine bay and have a look see what Holly's building. Engines then, Steve. Um, I've decided I'm going to be better prepared this year. No going looking at build specs halfway through the video. You said that last year. Yeah, well, we can blame COVID for any mistakes we made last year. Ah, the excuse for everything. Yeah. Uh, so, here is the engine that Holly's built up ready for the P5. Um, four litre cross bolted bottom end, Piper Torque Max camshaft, and 10 bolt. Uh, standard cylinder heads. Standard for us is three angle valve seats, still bulleted valve guides. Um, obviously new valves, new guides, new springs. So that's built up, ready for all of the covers, ancillaries, fueling and ignition system to be removed off the um, uh, customer's engine. For Holly's uh, keen eye to go over, just make sure he's happy with everything being bolted on there. So cleanliness of all the covers, they will all be um, cleaned here, prepared, etc. And then bolted onto this engine, ready to go back in the P5. This engine here is, has been built up for a range of a classic. To replace the 3.9, we have built a 4 litre um, bottom end, so again it's still 3.9 in, in capacity. Um, it's actually an identical engine to what we just looked at for the P5. It's standard cylinder heads, Piper Torque Max camshaft. Um, obviously this time is uh, with the fuel injection system from the Range Rover Classic. Uh, the garage that have extracted the engine have sent us down uh, the exchange unit and all the um, uh, covers you can see here that Holly's fitted already and the injection system. Uh, we're just waiting actually for them to send down the distributor for us to check over so that uh, we can make sure we're happy with mechanical and vacuum advance, uh, air gap on the pickup, etc. there. Um, so then Holly can actually fit the distributor so it's pretty much timed up, ready for them to turn the key. Um, so yeah, that's, that's ready to go out, obviously going out with the uh, ECU chip option as well. Uh, should make a, a, a classic Range Rover nice and what it want, once was again, but now RPI-fied. Is that a word? You should just say better. It's the same thing. Okay. Um, this is a full turnkey engine we're building up for a Defender in America. Um, hopefully we'll actually get to see this run on the engine test cell at the end of this uh, workshop update. Um, it's a 4.6 engine as per the 
stainless steel rock cover badges, stage three cylinder heads, uh, Piper camshaft that we specified to sit somewhere in between the 270 and the 285. Um, we didn't want to use the 285 because uh, we didn't want to just detract from the sort of bottom end grunt that the 4.6 gives, which the 285 does slightly detract from on a 4.6 and can just give that little bit of a, a rougher uh, tick over with the GEMS or Thor injection system. So we just toned the camshaft down a little bit uh, and got uh, one uh, specified by Piper to sit between the 270 and the 285. Uh, it's a cam we've actually run on a couple of engines before, they drive really, really nicely. Along with that, ported intake manifold, ported trumpet base, uh, and then obviously the full GEMS setup. So it'll have a Tornado unlocked DCU, um, complete with our wiring information for the customer to wire it in. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, nice package. Uh, we've done a, a few engines for this company now, this customer. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think we've got a couple more lined up with them as well. So that is engines at the moment. Oh, hang on, we have seen a couple of these ones, but yeah, this one is, oh no, I said I was better prepared. Yeah, it's all gone out the window now, mate. No, it's not. This is a four litre. I think it's going over to Germany or Belgium. And um, four litre bottom end. We're building it up to a short engine and the customer is then sending us his covers and ancillaries and the stage three cylinder heads and the Piper 270 camshaft kit that we'd already sent him that he hadn't actually got fitted to his 3.5 engine, and I've just remembered it's in a Defender. There you go. How's that? Well done. Yeah, but no one will know if I'm wrong anyway. Not even me. But you know me, I'll, I correct myself. <laughs> uh, no, that's definitely what it is. Okay, good. Let's move on to the next bit. Uh, well, the weather hasn't got any better. It hasn't. Somehow you've got under a canopy and I'm right in the line of fire where it's dripping off the top. Yeah, and that comment's not gonna make any sense to anyone because the bit I'm referring to you're going to edit in for later on this. Yeah okay, it'll be <laughs> fine. Whoops. Uh, anyway, Defender 90. Um, Steve's already put a Facebook time line up on have. this. You have? Yep. Um, showing some rather gloopy oil that yeah. looked like paint I believe. Lovely yeah, shade nice of grey. Paint your walls in it. Yeah, um, from the gearbox. Um, it's been sat in water for some time whilst off-roading. Um, etc. So we've been, gone through all the axles, uh, transfer box has been changed, gearbox has been fully flushed multiple times. Um, the snorkel setup on this um, had a few issues. There was actually no air filter. Um, the power plenum had been plumbed directly to the snorkel and the snorkel pipe work had actually um, broken through due to the bonnet stay every time closing down onto it. So we've utilized a uh, Ranger Classic or Discovery One 200 shape V8 uh, airbox um, as an inline filter and come up with this, uh, this uh, intake pipe work here. So everything is now nicely sealed off for the air intake. We've also rebuilt the carburetor because the, uh, interestingly, the float bowls had mud in them. Um, the airways were, were okay, but the, the float bowls had mud in them, which meant the accelerator jet also wasn't working. Um, because the mud had filled up the, um, the plunger hole. Uh, so that's now rebuilt and uh, working well on petrol. Um, we should have really filmed this prior to all of this, but thankfully you've got, you're getting really um, dripped on there. The things I do for art. <laughs> um, so uh, the next thing is the LPG system for us to look at on this. Um, we've done an inspection on it. It's not on the UK LPG database. And um, there's, there's quite a bit we've got to rectify on it. Uh, mainly pipe work that isn't clipped um, or is inadequately clipped, um, although I think majority of it just isn't at all. And Steve did find, I think you photographed this as well, the copper or rubber coated copper pipe had actually been resting on an exhaust manifold. Thankfully it was copper pipe, um, so it had just gone through the uh, rubber, uh, the rubber coating um so uh yeah obviously that needs moving and it revealed a hole in the manifold didn't it yes so uh we, we've got that to, to sort out as well so undoubtedly you'll be doing another timeline on it probably whether that appears before or after the next workshop update at some point let's yeah. go with that so uh i think uh we'll take a look at the p5 next okay which are my timeline for video planning i've written as p6 so that doesn't yeah, work uh, one of the two do you want to get out of the rain now yes right well um i'm not sure how many times steve blink doing the job but engine's out we seem to be missing a bit 
He's taking the gearbox out as well. Steve! What? Why, um, what are you taking the gearbox out for? Oh, that'll be right, boy. Don't you worry about that. Right, okay. I have a plan. Leave right. it to it, I guess. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I want to be as far away from this as possible. Really? Yeah, I reckon it'll be all right. He knows what he's doing. Out in this P38 then, um, it's on an M plate. So does that make it 95? I think 94. 94, okay, 94, 95, we'll say. Um, so obviously an early one with GEMS fuel injection on it. Holly has built up a 4.6 um, RPI standard engine. Um, and uh, what that means to us is uh, obviously a pressure tested block, hot pressure test with uh, top hat liners installed, cylinder head specifications, three angle valve seats, brand new bulleted valve guides, brand new valves, brand new springs, and a pipe of torque max camshaft that's got a little bit of extra lift on it uh, just to promote a bit more bottom end grunt. Um, driving incredibly well, throttle response is instant, you've only got to kind of whisper at the throttle pedal to get the engine just to pick you up a little bit. Um, that's aided by the Tornado ECU chips, obviously. I don't want to worry you, Steve, but every time I talk, my glasses steam up. As long as you stay on a fairly straight bit of road, we're all right. Oh, failing that, you'll have to go right a bit left a bit, won't you? It's fine. I've got another hand that's not holding the cameras. <laughs> if it all gets hairy. Um, so yeah, um, incredibly smooth. Nice and responsive, obviously not as um, get up and goy as a, a stage three cylinder head version, which we, we've seen a lot of towards the end of last year on our workshop update videos. Um, you know, the stage three heads do allow the 4.6 to, to breathe a lot easier, um, which obviously give it that uh, extended power throughout the entire rev range. And then we specify a camshaft to suit um, where in the rev range you're, you're gonna be most of the time. Um, but actually, quite nice to build for us what's a standard 4.6 engine uh, for a P38 Range Rover and uh, to see the results here. It's all in all just a, um, a very nice P38. Yeah it is, yeah. I think it'll uh, go on to live another long life. It's obviously what 25 years old now already um, and the engine's about 120 miles old since we put it in. I think I've clocked a uh, uh, about that on it, something like that. So, uh, yeah. Let's go and look at some roadworks. It seems so, yeah. We thought we'd come out a different way. We need to find somewhere to pull over so we can have a look under the bonnet. But pulling over where there's roadworks probably isn't the best idea. They tend to get a bit shouty if you do that. What, the traffic cones? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realise yeah. they had voices. Okay then, uh, so the 4.6 engine. Um, Again, not too much under the bonnet to see, uh, other than the, the MagnaCore plug leads, and then our detailing on the engine. So rocker cover and plenum chamber are um, um, taken back to original material, etched primed, painted gloss black, and then the ribbing is sanded down. Um, there's new hoses throughout, um, new tensioners, etc. Just to be a reliable, um, power plant for this vehicle the customer's now going to uh, enjoy. So um, with that, Steve, can we get out of the cold and wet now? Yeah, it did start raining, didn't it? <laughs> just the right time. Yeah, thankfully not heavily. But yeah, so um, if there was lots of trick bits under here to show you, I would, but there's no need for them for the vehicle to drive lovely. So uh, that's what this does. I'm getting in the car. See you. So the yellow Westfield then, um, the customer originally contacted us on this. Um, it's in conjunction with Toy Box Cars, who we've uh, had Westfield in from before. Uh, it's got a little uh, idling issue, which caused it to cut out a junction sometimes and things. So probably got a setup issue on the uh, hot wire injection system, maybe lack of spark or incorrect timing, advanced curve in the distributor, etc. So obviously we discussed going through all of that. Um, customer wants to benefit from bringing the vehicle in rather than just getting it to not stall though, uh, which was obviously a wise choice. So we're going to do the Tornado ECU chip to get the engine fueling correctly rather than fueling for a, uh, well, one of them. One of them. Did, was that parked there on purpose? I'll say yes. Okay. Let's go with yes. Um, and ignition upgrades. 
Uh, the other thing we're going to do is remove the cast Westfield plenum chamber and replace it with the carbon fibre version that we do, which again, we've seen before. Um, and hopefully when we're doing that, we'll do some videos in the next workshop update to kind of show why we're doing it, because this does restrict airflow to the front two cylinders and doesn't result in the engine running nicely balanced. Let's so, that one. Um, you best go edit this and upload it before you have a week off, eh? Yeah. Okay. Well, three of them come out. How many do you reckon you can get back in? I've got no idea, but I've got this to help. Hmm, I'll tell you what, use this instead. 